Hello, this is Sin City Preacher, and tonight I would like to talk to all of the Roman Catholics. I'd like to take a minute and tell you that I love you, and I just want to have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. First, let me praise you for the beliefs that you hold that are correct. Uh, I'll start with the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, you believe that God became a man named Jesus. He was born from a virgin, and her name was Mary, the Virgin Mary. Well, that is correct. According to the Bible, in Matthew 1, 23, it says, The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel means God with us. So, we agree. Um, you are correct. Jesus Christ was born from a virgin. And it says that he is God with us. Um, so you also hold the doctrine that Jesus Christ is God, the Son of God, and he is fully God and fully man. So you are correct. And here's there's one verse uh, to point that out. 1 John 5.20 says, uh, We know also that the Son of God has come, has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So, Jesus is God. And you believe in the deity of Christ, so you are correct. You also believe that after Jesus was crucified on the third day, he was raised from the dead. You believe an actual bodily resurrection took place. And that is correct. Uh, if we go to 1 Peter 1.3, it says... Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <clears throat> so, I'm going to give you credit where credit is due. You believe in the virgin birth of Jesus, you believe in the deity of Christ, and you believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Well, I need to take some time to point out some doctrines you hold that are not correct according to the Bible. So, these are serious errors. You, um, you have priests that you call Father. But Jesus spoke, spoke in Matthew 23, 9, he says, Do not call anyone on earth Father, for you have one Father, and he is in heaven. Jesus clearly for, forbids us from calling anyone father in a spiritual sense and yet you call your priest father and you refer to your Pope as Holy Father but this is what it says in John 17 11 Jesus is speaking he said he's praying to God the Father he says I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and I'm, I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. So Jesus is praying to God the Father, and he calls him Holy Father. The term Holy Father only appears one time in the Bible, and it is a title for God the Father. So you should not call the Pope Holy Father. That is a title for God the Father. <clears throat> you also uh, have idols in the form of statues and you bow down and worship you pray in front of these idols uh, you have uh, a cross with an image of Jesus on it you have crucifixes you have statues of Mary and others and you get on your knees and you pray in front of these statues but what does the Bible say? <clears throat> go to Exodus 20 verse 4 and 5 this is the second commandment, by the way. So you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. And yet that's what you're doing with your statues. You're making these images and then bowing down and praying in front of them. <clears throat> now, if you... Um, look up the Ten Commandments in the Catholic Bible, you won't find 
these verses. Because the second commandment in the Roman Catholic Bible has been removed. <clears throat> yeah, it's very interesting what, what they've done. <clears throat> the, these verses are too embarrassing for Roman Catholicism because it clearly condemns your use of statues and praying in front of them. Uh, so you had to get rid of the evidence against you. So you remove the second commandment <clears throat> and all you got to do to find out that these are really in the Bible is just do a Google search on the Ten Commandments and it'll show you. Or just look up any Bible, NIV, King James, NASB, many others, look them up and you'll see that the Ten Commandments, that is the Second Commandment. <clears throat> but what the Roman Catholics have done is they've taken out the Second Commandment because it embarrassed them and that left them with nine. So you can't have nine commandments. They took the tenth commandment, divided it in half, giving them an extra commandment. So now they have ten. But they're missing the true second commandment. Now, uh, Roman Catholicism also forbids priests to marry. But in Mark 1.30 it says, <clears throat> But Simon, that's uh, Peter, the apostle, Simon Peter's wife, his mother, lay sick with a fever. So this saying is Simon Peter had a wife. In fact, you'll find that all the apostles had wives. They were all married. And you claim that Simon Peter is the founder of your church and he had a wife. <clears throat> so don't forbid your priests to marry. Take it a step further in 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 through 3 it says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. <clears throat> they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from meats which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. So this scripture says that for those of us who believe and know the truth <clears throat> that we should not be forbidden to marry and we can eat meat. I remember when Roman Catholics were forbidden to eat meat on Fridays. <clears throat> you also memorize and repeat prayers. You form beads into a rosary and then say memorize prayers in uh, a pattern. <clears throat> but what's the Bible say? Matthew 6, 7, Jesus is speaking, he says, <clears throat> When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. <clears throat> now, you don't memorize prayers and then repeat them over and over again like a, a mindless robot. To, when you pray, you should speak in a, a, as a conversation with Jesus Christ. Um, you also <clears throat> confess your sins to priests. But what does the Bible say? 1 Timothy 2.5 <clears throat> There is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the mediator, not a priest. In 1 John 2.1 it says, If anyone sins, <clears throat> we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ is our advocate, not your priest. And if we look up that word advocate, as it appears in Greek it's parakletos and it, it translates as one called alongside to help or intercessor Jesus Christ is our intercessor not your priest <clears throat> now all of these things are serious errors but I believe that <clears throat> all of those wrong beliefs can be forgiven but there is one error in the Roman Catholic Church that is so serious it is unforgivable and I'm going to tell you about that next in the next video.